morning everyone. Good morning. Thank you all very much for coming. And turn it off on time. That's uh, you should all get a present for that. Yeah. 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 I say you yeah. should, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm going to give somebody a present for turning up as the first person. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> we'll do bread butter at 2 a.m. in the morning. No <laughs> <laughs> way! Yeah, so she deserves a prize for that. Because I, 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 thought, I thought I was the first person here. I, what time did I get here? Around um, to 7. Yeah, I've got it to 7 and there was already in the car park. <laughs> Jesus Christ. She got here at quarter to six. Uh, yeah. So for that, she definitely deserves the book. Yeah. But, but there's, there's two more books, no, not more books, but two more books to give up. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll define the criteria as we go along. Uh, in fact, what is my book on trading and investing made easy? The other is this book, which is very interesting, Finding Life's Passion. You know, the Americans are very funny. Yeah. Because I have the title of uh, New York Best Selling Author. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you know why I have that title? As a New York Times and USA Best Selling Author, it's because of this book. Um, it's a book on finding life's passion. I guess somebody will win this one. But it's a trick, it's a marketing trick. Because the guys who, I met these guys in America, in California, doing, okay, it's a long story, I have a very checkered past. But anyway, <laughs> when we met, they were asking me to be part of their book, uh, because it was a mastermind group. And these guys, uh, you know, all this, what do you call them, uh, Tony Robbins, all that kind of group, uh, they write this book every year, and it's a book of short stories of people just giving you life advice and finding your passion and it always goes to number one because of the group of authors you know they all have huge networks so it always goes to number one so they are telling already if you put your story in here and it goes to number one you can say you are of course you are a best selling author <laughs> which is weird so uh, yeah of course I did it I think I'm on page 52 it's, yeah on page 52 you see my own short story there so somebody will win that one and one will win my, my book. Uh, I have a name for that. <laughs> oh, yes. I call such things technical truths. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Technically true, but not the truth. You know, you know, you know that. It's true, though. You know, you know, that, you know that one, another way you can do a technical truth? They get this guy's told me very. <laughs> <laughs> so, say, for instance, you write a book and you're from Ijebode. <laughs> of course, you can be the best selling author in Jebode, but if you're still the best selling author, you just don't have to tell them it's from Jebode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. I'll just pass this around. This is a feedback form from Canton Compass themselves. I just want to have your feedback on their facilities. Uh, but you can submit it tomorrow. So just fill that in when you can. They want to know that you would think there's. Facilities are lovely or terrible. Isn't that right, my boss? <laughs> okay, so today, uh, um, over the next two days, obviously, we're going to be going through a lot. So, as usual, we'll try and make it interactive, but at the same time, we want to go off, off track. So, we'll try and uh, keep focused and at the same time, keep it light. The bathrooms, for those who are here for the first time, is just outside here to the right. Uh, Right, so we're going to start shortly. In between each session, we're going to have about a five-minute break. Uh, and from the last class we had last week, you know, the feedback is that number one, we stress is five minutes. Five minutes means five minutes. And so long as one person is back in five minutes, we will start. <laughs> so we'll talk about the five. <laughs> we'll leave the five out. So after each, each session, we're going to have a five-minute break. Uh, so you can use the bathroom, stretch, gather your thoughts, and then we we'll start again. And then we'll break for lunch at 12.15. So we're going to start with the introduction to invest in financial markets, then financial planning, background to successful investing, background to successful investing two. Then we'll start going into fixed income and securities. Uh, in the afternoon, 
and then we'll try your production to us about real estate in Western on 3 p.m. Well, 3 p.m. to the end. I thought it was tomorrow. <laughs> nice today, and you have the timetable, so you can't, <laughs> you, you can't check it out now. And then day two, um, although we'll talk about that tomorrow again, but we'll go through some analysis, and then we'll start talking about, uh, today we're talking about fixed income. Tomorrow, good morning. Tomorrow we'll be talking about uh, stocks and investment strategies, and this is an important one, asset allocation, where we put it all together. And then after lunch, we're going to have a practical session again. And this practical session will expect everyone to pick a bond, treasury bill, and stock, and analyze it, and tell us why you're buying that bond, why you're buying that stock, when you buy it, why you're buying it. Um, so you're not just going to say, I'm buying Apple shares or buying Zenit Bank. You have to give us the rationale behind your decision. Why you're waiting, why you're buying. We'll do all that during the practical session. But obviously, by the time we get here, you have all the information to make, to be able to make those uh, decisions. Okay, so, oh, can you hear me? If you look back and hear me, then that means everybody can hear me. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So let's kick off. So let's kick off. I'm going to talk about production to invest in the financial markets. Um, uh, I believe I've met most people here, but just in case, that, because there's some few new faces, uh, I'll just quickly introduce myself. Uh, my name is. That's a reminder to say put your phones on silent or vibrate. <laughs> That's a good reminder. Put your phones on silent or vibrate. Right, like I said, my name is Dr. Jeremy Banjoko, but just call me Remy. Please don't call me Dr. I hate that Dr. title. Uh, always sounds very formal. And, like I said, I was an extra doctor again. <laughs> so, medicine is gone. So, yes, uh, for those who have seen me for the first time, I used to be a gynecologist in the UK. Uh, then, decided to wind down from Ops and Gyne. I did Ops and Gyne from 1993 to, not just I can't remember. And then went into general practice, but I was winding off from medicine and then quit completely about five years ago to move back to Nigeria. But I think the key, let's just stick it to what's relevant to what we're discussing. The, the key relevance is that in all that time, I used to trade and invest in the financial markets. So I've had over 18 years experience trading and investing in the financial markets. So most of what I talk about is from life experience. I'm still trading and investing. And also, I lecture at the CAS Business School in London. Although that one, so I'm going to stop that one. Going back and forth is too much hassle. Uh, but I, used to, I teach MSc and postgraduate students in the CAS Business School on investing and trading to what well, we call it alternative investment management. So, because I always say it's important that whoever is teaching you about the markets, you know, it's not just someone that's read a book and just spitting out what they read in the book because the markets really, if somebody hasn't experienced it practically, then they will not be able to teach you well. So that's why it's important at least I give you that background before I start. So you don't think I just went to read one book <laughs> and just re recite it to you. Now, this is my good, good friend, it's not my friend, but I like him. Uh, investment tips from Warren Buffett. Never depend on single income, very important. Multiple sources of income is very important. So you make investment to create a second source. So on spending, oh sorry, on spending, if you buy things you do not need, soon you have to sell things you do need. Of course, on saving, you do not say what is left after spending, or spend what is left after saving. All this is going to come relevant when we start talking about financial planning. On taking risks, never test the depth of the river with both feet, otherwise you will sink. On investment, do not put all eggs in one basket. And again, we're going to talk about that when we discuss asset allocation tomorrow. Morning. That Togichi? Yes, go through. Oh, sorry, hold on. There you go. Take this. Yes. You can grab a seat. And on expectation. Honesty is a very expensive gift. Do not expect it from cheap people. 
of them will try or they'll wear cheap people though, the ones they're still giving you uh, <laughs> which they made it more expensive. <laughs> but uh, but that's that, that that's true. Because usually when people like to get free information, free, 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 people will only give you snippets for free. They don't want to invest their time and effort to give you a lot of information. Because people don't like to pay for information, but it's very important that honesty is very expensive. They don't expect it from cheap people. Okay, this is all what we're here for today, financial literacy, which is the knowledge and capability in personal money management. But the big thing is that, what is your ability to make informed judgments and take effective decisions regarding the use and management of money? But what I like about this de definition is the big uh, words here, where it says informed judgments. Because whatever decision you make regarding money, the big question is what is informing that decision? So even if you go and invest in a barber shop, What's informing you on opening the barber shop? Have you done your due diligence? Do you know about cutting hair? Do you know about um, your clientele? Where's the best place to be a barber? So obviously, we are talking about the financial market. So if you're buying a stock, what informed your decision on that stock? If you're buying a bond, what informed your decision? Or like Montreal, we're talking about real estate. The same thing too. What is informing your decision about buying that piece of land, that, that house? So that's the big key, is that are you just making decisions because somebody said so? Because of how you feel? <clears throat> what is informing your decision? It's very crucial financial interest here. And then once you have this, you have the knowledge, how do you take effective decisions regarding the use and management of money? Because again, sometimes people do have the information, but they don't do anything with the information. So it's a combination of both. Number one is having the information, being well informed about what you want to do, and then taking action and doing doing it properly. So that's what we'll be talking about today. So we'll start off by saying what do you want out of life? <coughs> Who can tell us what do you want out of life? We're going to we're going to no, this would be a present, but <laughs> This is too simple. Eh? We should, we should. Anyone, anyone wants to help us out? What do you want out of life? <coughs> Give us a go. Financial security. Yes, but be more specific. Being able to do what I want to do with um, without um, thinking too much of how I can afford it. Good. Being able to um, meet essential needs yes. without having to scratch my head. Good. I think that's the same for everybody. So, you know, it's a question of having a plan for that. So if you, oh, I should ask you that, actually, Ethel. So how would that happen? Okay, um, making wise decisions about um, money, investing to make that sum of money become more, and we invest to make more money. So I'm delaying gratification so that at the end, you know, having a time plan, I'll be able to achieve my my aim. Sure. Um, it's not a forever. It, I shouldn't just think it will happen. Yeah. I must put action to my words. And when does the action start? Now. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I think that's what I was coming to. Because the good thing is that number one, you will have to have an idea of what you want out of life, or know where you're going. And I think what FL says is the same for everybody, including myself. But of course, there are also more specific things you might want. You might want to build a home for the disadvantaged. You might want to set up a foundation. You might want to build a hospital. You know, there might be other things specifically you want out of life. In fact, I don't know if I said this last week. Or, anyway, it doesn't matter what I said last week about the free session. I always tell people that the best way to think about this is to imagine, in fact, this is a nice good exercise now to use. Funny enough, I use this when we're at the dinner table, which we went out with a big group, and when the dinner table is getting boring. I'll throw out this question and get everybody to answer it around the, <laughs> around the table. Make everybody very depressed. <laughs> you know. Um, so this is the question that, let's say for instance you live a full life, 
and died at the age of 90. So you've lived well, you died at the age of 90. What do you want them to say at your eulogy about you at your death at 90? What do you want people to say about you? Who can give it a go? What do you want people to say about you? This is one question I asked myself, that's why I quit medicine. I didn't want anyone to say I was a very good doctor. Full stop. I didn't want that. <laughs> but I mean, that's just for me. Uh, some people might say I want to be remembered as a good doctor. None of you have thought about it. Yes, go ahead. <clears throat> That's a very good one. But again, that's something that I came up with myself. And that's another, there's so many reasons why I quit medicine. Number one, I definitely won that. And number two, you know, I had more passion for the charity work I was doing than for the medicine. And that's what I wanted to be remembered for. Like you rightly say, part of people. But again, when you start, in fact, let's stick with that one. Because it's interesting you say that. So what do you need to do to achieve that? <clears throat> For me to be able to achieve that, I have to reach a level of knowledge in who I am first. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, also, knowledge in what it is that I can bring to the table and what I can offer and how to be Given time, given money, given needs that people will get back. Where do you need to start? No, no, in terms oh, of the okay. giving. Um, in terms of giving people back. It doesn't back. necessarily have to start with when I am wealthy. Exactly, that's what I was trying to get at. Because sometimes people always make that mistake. You think that when I make money, I will start doing that. But number one, you can start straight away. Giving up your time, effort, knowledge, experience, or whatever. But again, it's is this where money comes in? Because even if you want to give back, sometimes it's going to take your time. So the question is, are you in a job whereby you have no time? It's going to take money because, you know, when I go to Rwanda, and everything I do to in Rwanda is self-funded. Although it's a charity and we get donations, but 100% of all the donations goes to the projects. So I pay for my flight, I pay for my hotel, and, and also sponsor children there. So where does the money come from? So you also have to think about all these things. It's not just going to happen. So there has to be, it then begins to crystallize your mind. What sort of business should I do? What sort of job should I be doing? So that I can have the time and the money to do all these things. But all that comes out from you just begin to think about this question. What do you want out of life? And then start to plan, making, again, going back to that informed decision. Because I knew as a gynecologist, there was no way I could do that. I was in the hospital 90% of the time. So it wasn't, it wasn't going to happen. I would just die with the dream. <laughs> you know. Okay, so think about what's your current network? Very big question. How do you define network? Your assets might not be your life. Good. Some of these questions should be answered quickly, but I know some of you were here for the free seminar. This <laughs> So you should be giving me the answers quickly. What's your, what's the, how do you define an asset? What brings you money? Good. What's the liability? What takes money out of the pocket? Exactly. So you need to do that homework and write down exactly what are the things you put in money in your pocket. And write down what's taking money out of your pocket and do the sum, assets minus liability, and that will give you your net work. And even if it's negative, that's fine. But at least you know where you're starting from. And again, you know, again, we'll try to talk about real estate. But sometimes real estate can be an asset, it can be a liability. It all depends on whether it's bringing in money or taking money out. And uh, if you leave you from the bankruptcy, I know it can be a huge liability. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're not, if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, do you have a financial plan? So, Ethel says she wants to retire and not have to worry about money. Do you have a plan in place for that? You know, is it about me or what should I get? 
Olajuwon. Olajuwon wants to give back. So we have a financial plan in place to achieve, obviously you have to be specific about what kind of project you want to do to give back. But you have a plan in place for that. So whatever you want to achieve in life, you have to have a financial plan in place. But we're going to help, help you with that. So we're going to start talking about financial planning. Now, an example of a financial plan is basically just, by the time you've answered all those questions, what, obviously when you talk about what you want out of life, it doesn't necessarily be one thing, isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah, it could be many things. You know, I want my children to go to Harvard, I want to buy a home in Banana Island, I want, you know, it could be different things. So you, could have, you have to have a plan for each of them. You have to have a plan for each of them. So, but it's an example of a financial plan. Obviously, you need to have a financial plan to cover regular expenses. <coughs> We're going to talk about this in more detail. But you need to have a plan to cover regular expenses. You need to have a plan for holidays. So, you know, if you're going, if you say you want to be traveling once a year, you should plan towards that. And have a financial plan for holidays. Have obviously school fees very important. Have a financial plan for school fees, have a financial plan if you want to buy a house, and most importantly, financial plan for retirement. Because if you say you want to retire at the age of 55, 56, and not do anything, it's not just going to happen. You need to start to plan towards it. So these are some examples. You have to anticipate future expenditure and plan for them. You know, I think in this day and age, most people tend to be reactionary. So they wait for things to happen and then they figure out how they're going to pay for it. And again, there are certain things, yeah, there's what we call unforeseen circumstances. Yeah, but there are certain things that are not unforeseen. You know, I always say when you give back to a child, you know you're going to send the child to school. So you can't say that was a shock when the school fees came. You knew from the time the child was born, it was going to go to school. You know, you know you want to retire, that's not, if you retire and you, there's no money, that can be a shock because you knew you want to retire. You know, you want to, you know, there are certain things that really you can't say they're unforeseen. You know, if you say you want to go on holiday next year, you can plan towards it. Yeah, so anticipate future expenditure and plan for them. You know, your financial goals should be smart. Smart just means specific measurable, achievable, realistic, and obviously it has to be time bound. Realistic just means obviously you're not going to say, I want to be a millionaire in one week. You know, that's just not realistic. Unless you're going to carry cocaine, and even that one is high risk. <laughs> you get shot or you end up in jail. So, but it has to be specific. And when you get this high risk, you see FCC will be chasing you, you can't sleep. People will be disturbing you. And that's the sad thing about this thing. People don't always look at the downsides of all this criminality. See designing that is stressed out of my head. <laughs> you know. But again, if I like that saying, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. So if you know yeah, you can put up with stress, you can put up with going to prison, people chasing you up and down, you can't sleep at night, go for it. <laughs> but be careful. Now this is why I like this spot, because when I say specific, like I was saying about you, when you said you want to give back. You have to be specific about what you want to do. You know, I want to do X, Y, Z. Be specific. You know, I want to plan for holidays to Joss every year. I want to plan for holidays to Kenya every year. I want to plan for holidays to USA. You have to be specific. I want. I'm hoping my children will go to Atlantic Hall School. Then be specific. You want to then look at what's the cost for Atlantic Hall fees and start working towards that. So they have to be specific. Uh, first, they, they tie hand in hand. Because once they are specific, you can measure it. Because if you say now, okay, um, you want your kids to go to Atlantic, or you find out what the school fees are, maybe factoring inflation, and then you now know how much you're saving for. If you want to retire on maybe 200,000 naira a month to be enjoying yourself, that's you know measurable. Okay, what sort of investments do I need to do that will be giving me 200000 a month when I retire? So once you've made it specific, you can always put a figure and measure it. And like I say, it has to be achievable, realistic, and put a time to it. 
So if you have short-term goals, you know, things that you want to achieve in, the, in less than a year, I think these short-term goals will probably be how you can cover your regular expenses in case something happens to your business, to your health, or to your job. You know, you must have a plan in place that can cover your monthly expenses. So that would be your short-term goal. The intermediate-term goals, obviously, you know, one to ten years, that could be a lot of things. It could be school fees, it could be holidays, uh, it could be saving for a house. And long-term goals, obviously, retirement. So you can choose which one you want to do, but you must have a plan. And you need to differentiate between necessities and wants. <coughs> what's a necessity? Or what's the difference between necessities and wants? Something, necessity is something that you need. It's yes. not available. You have to drink water, for example. Exactly. Well, wants is I can decide. I don't need to go for a holiday. Exactly. For any holiday. Yeah. I don't need to buy clothes for two years. <laughs> I mentioned that one because that's what I did when I had some financial problems. I didn't buy clothes for about two years ago. Uh, because, yeah, the clothes I have is good. And when it starts frame on the collar, then you change it. Till then, you leave it alone. <laughs> so, some of them are not going around naked. That's the main thing. Yeah. So, but you have to pressure between, and that's very important. Because you find that when people have financial problems or they're trying to walk towards their financial goals, they don't want to leave some luxuries alone. They still want to change their phone every time the new model comes out. They want to be changing their buying this, buying that. You know, things that are, like you already said, are not necessary. Yeah? Exactly. So you always, when you're making these plans, because when you start doing this anyway seriously, you, this automatically will happen. Because when you get to think, oh my God, where am I going to find the money for this coffee? Where am I going to find money for my retirement fund, for this and that? That in itself will begin to refocus that, okay, this money I'm spending, what am I actually spending it for? But we're going to come to that too. Now, this, this is a real life example. Now, the volume is not, it's not very loud, so we'll all try and keep quiet, but it's, very, it's a very funny example of how to achieve your financial goals. Very funny. Not funny, it's real. It's an Indian couple. This Indian couple, they've been to every World Cup since 1982. Seriously? Yes. And you see... Football, football World Cup. Yes. And you see how they achieved it. I love this story. It really just explains everything you need to know about financial plan. I'm just hoping it's loud enough. Let me see if I can have too many connections. Listen. Oops. Sorry. My name is Chaitali Chatterjee. This year, when we go to Brazil, it will be our ninth time. My name is Pannalal Chatterjee. I'm 81 and I live in Calcutta. When I first went to the Football World Cup in 1982, I was so captivated by the beauty of watching the match in the stadium that we decided we have to go to every World Cup. I can't express the feeling of witnessing the event every four years. On TV, the camera only follows the ball. They don't show the complete picture, the strategy and formations in which players move. Some people drink. Some are addicted to tea or cinema. My addiction is football. He goes to watch local football and walks every day to keep himself fit. We save every penny for four years and try our best not to spend from it. Sometimes we don't eat fish for a whole month. Yes, to compensate. We 
We even cut down costs by packing ready-to-eat meals, biscuits, sweets and snacks from here. We even take tea bags. Food is never the priority. It's the thrill of being able to watch the game. When I saw Maradona in 1986, I thought, how can a human force torture the defense of a team single-handedly? But I think Zidane was better. No, Maradona is unparalleled. Oh, Maradona. Maradona. Right. Could you tell us a little bit? Yeah. Like <laughs> it's quite straightforward. I think the, the picture tells it all. When I say the picture tells it all, you can see that are they a wealthy couple? No. no. They're not wealthy by any stretch of the imagination. That's the bottom line. And <coughs> when they went to the first World Cup in 1982, they decided they'll go every four years. So they now have a plan. That was their goal. Their goal is that every four years we're going to the World Cup. So they had a goal, they had a timeline, and like they said, everything for the next four years they will save every penny. You know, they will cut out stuff. What's that? Oh, this is thanks to it. Sorry. So the, the bottom line is that, you know, you can see that if this relatively poor Indian couple can do it, then anyone can do it. And of course, I'm sure all of you know it's not very cheap to fly to the World Cup. The tickets, the flights, the hotel, this can't be cheap. But you can see they had a plan, they had a goal, it was time-oriented, it was specific, it was measurable, they know, okay, the World Cup will be in this country, how much are the tickets, where can we stay, and etc. Four years, they save every penny. Like I said, sometimes they will skip food, they will not buy fish, <laughs> you know, do everything they need to do to get to a and it's the, onto the ninth World Cup. So it does a good way to show the reality of planning. You can achieve things once you focus your mind and plan for it. Because I'm sure when you had the ninth World Cup, you didn't want to reach couple there just enjoying themselves and fine but no it just shows you that once you have a plan and you're focused it's possible okay consumer price index who can define that somebody should be able to define that some of these people on this table have we've gone over this before what is consumer price index quick 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 uh, I, I would say it's uh, the weighted average. Mm. In a simple term. Okay. You know I'm a medical doctor, I don't know this big weighted okay. Um, Break it down for me. I would say it's, it's the average of all the prices of goods. Good. Yeah. Good. Average. Yes. Who can add to that? Inflation rate. No, add to what you said. Yeah, um, consumer prices can also be defined as inflation rate. But I like what he said, but he missed the key word. He said it's the average of prices within a and service within a year. But there's another there's a key word missing. Or key phrase. What goods? No. So he says the average prices of consumer goods over a year, but well, there's a key word. What do you think tell on it? Okay, I think um, maybe a measure of how the costs of the goods the change, and change, measure... The change, okay. change, that's the key word. Oh, okay. So there's a change in those prices. prices. Oh, so that's the key word, the change. So not just the average prices, but the change in those prices. And that's the key thing to the consumer price index. So it's the average, is a measure of how the rate, again yeah. that's a key word, rate. What, what the rate means is constantly moving. But the question is how fast is it moving? Is it moving slowly or is it moving fast where it is moving? So a consumer price index is a, is a measure of the rate of change of 
the average prices of consumer goods, basic, and that's another keyword, basic consumer goods and services. So it's the rate, the, the, the measure of the rate of change of the average or the basic cost of consumer goods and services over a certain period. Uh, sometimes they do it over a month, sometimes they do it over a year, but the generally accepted one is over a year. Are we all together? Yes. Okay. So, I think, basically, and this is the key to consumer price index, always make sure you understand what they're doing to measure this consumer price index. Because, again, that's why I said the key word there is basic cost of living. Basic. So, what they look at is what's I always say when I talk about consumer price index, to imagine yourself waking up in the house. You wake up in the house, you either rent it or you bought it or you have a mortgage on it. So what's the average cost of a mortgage? What's the average cost of rent? But when you're looking at average cost of rent and mortgage, you're looking at places like, you know, Sewell area. They're only looking at Tikoi, Banana Island. Are you following me? Yeah. They look, so they're looking at average, what the average person can afford. So you've woken up, What's the average cost of rent, average cost of uh, mortgage? You know, work off from a bed, so average cost of furniture, chairs. Again, not from the designer shop. Okay. You want the capital, we just do for you. Then you go and brush your teeth, average cost of toothpaste, toothbrush. You have your breakfast, average cost of eggs, gari, um, akara, oki. You know, all those kind of things, bread, milk. milk. You know, average cost of things like that. You want to go to work or to go to school or to go to your job or your business. You wear your clothes, average cost of clothes. Again, not your job money and all that. Just average cost of clothes. You get out of the house. You either take public transport, average cost of public transport. You drive your car, average cost of car, average cost of petrol, average cost of. So you can see it's just what you need to survive. Isn't that right? Yes. That's what they're measuring. So every month. They will take the average of these prices from around Nigeria. Every country does it. So in Nigeria, they will take average cost from Anambra, Kaduna, Madriguri, Lagos, but they'll take average from Nigeria, and you'll see how much the cost of all these things have gone up from last year till this year. So we're in February now. So in, in February, they will start to calculate how much of uh, the, the, the cost gone up from February last year till February this year, and then the report will come out in March. Yeah. And in March, they'll do from March last year to March this year, it'll come out in April. So the report comes out every month, but it's measuring from the year before. So every month you get this figure telling you the rate of increase of the average cost of basic goods and services. So, of course, in Nigeria, we have it at 15.37%. So if the average cost of living in Nigeria is going up by 15.37%, for you to just live that basic lifestyle I've just talked about, how much your salary go up by? 20%. At least. Yeah. Same thing, isn't that right? That's the basic. So if you just want to keep your head above water, you know, don't, you're not traveling to Dubai, you're not buying fancy gifts, you're not going to fancy restaurants, you're, you're just having your gari and hoki and just falling <laughs> 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 you put your hand in your head. <laughs> so if, you, if you're just living that kind of lifestyle, your salary needs to go up by at least 15.37. Isn't that right? Yes. Okay. How many of you want that kind of lifestyle? No, no. They didn't come. Sorry? They're not here. They're not here. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that lifestyle. Wait. Like, like no, just have your Gary Oki and leave it that way. You know, just. But you know, the funny thing is that let's actually let's forget the lifestyle actually, because the sad thing is that even if you don't want that lifestyle, the big question really is how many people have a salary increase of fifteen point three percent a year? Exactly. So whether you like it or not, most people are not even making the basic to live a basic lifestyle debt-free. Yeah. 
because most people don't have a salary increase of 15.37 percent a year. So it, that's, that this, that's why this is very important, uh, consumer price index, to understand it. Because once you understand it, you don't know the reality of the life or the, the circumstances you're in. Don't you ever ask yourself the question, why do I always run out of money? Isn't that right? Yeah. If you have money, it runs out. This is why it runs out. Because the amount you have is not keeping pace with the inflation. That's why you run out of money quickly. Do you think... Actually, I don't want to depress all of you too much. No, that's you. Okay. <laughs> you know, knowledge is very so much fun. Do you think this is by mistake? Do you like do you think this is by mistake? Yeah. You know this is by design. Yeah. <laughs> by, you, you mean like you mean like it's intentional? Yeah. Yeah. From weight. For all these countries it's intentional. Wow. Okay, who knows the difference between capitalism, socialism, you know you held these terms right around. What is capitalism? That's, um, that's, like the, that's like the free market. So yeah. People, everyone is like, like their boss, they have great jobs for themselves, have people. So that's the thing. How many great jobs for themselves? So people, people, people live in a capitalist society, but they don't realize that the people who benefit in a capitalist society are you know, like you said, owners of business, owners of land, owners of property, owners of investments. So in a, a capitalist society is designed to keep the workers in their place forever. So you can never get out of it. Yes, because you don't know. This is where knowledge comes in. Because, for instance, now, uh, that's why I said I don't want to depress people. Because there's this story now, say, for instance, I own Apple. Yeah? And I have only an employee, my employee, in Apple. What is he as an employee? I pay him a salary. Probably not keeping pace with his profession. The guy comes up with a brilliant idea, and I say, this guy is smart. If this guy leaves Apple, and go and set up, you probably be a threat. Yes. What do I need to do to stop you? No, no, no. Motivate me. Exactly. You have to know what to motivate mm -hmm. But that's my point. But the bottom line is that he doesn't know that whatever the motivation is, he's still he stuck. Keep him stuck. Mm. Whereas the guy who owns up is enjoying his life, inflation is not, nothing to him. They are making 100% return a year. So, but that's what I'm saying. The capitalist society is going to keep workers working so that the capitalists can enjoy themselves while everybody keeps working hard. So, which which is the best form of society? To be the capitalist society? Ah, that's another argument. <laughs> but whether you say what is the best form, just face the reality that Nigeria is a capitalist society. Yeah. Period. And that's the reality. And uh, when, we, when we get to the bar or the restaurant, we can argue about uh, which one is good or which one is bad. But the fact is, we're in a capitalist society. Yeah. That's it. Is so, it you as a capitalist? It is. It is. You you. How many people, do you know what's the percentage of people in the US that earn more than $100,000 a year? Yeah. 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 Less than 5% wow. earn $100,000. Dollars a year, yeah. Yeah. less than five percent. So which one? Yeah, it's, 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 it's not kind of whatever which one I prefer. I like capitalist side, but I'm a capitalist. <laughs> anyway, let's get back <laughs> to where we where we are. So this is very important. So we all understand consumer price index. Yes. Okay. Is one say no? Okay. So this is very important, and it's important for so many reasons. Because number one, like we've said, if your salary is not going up by 15.3%, you're in trouble, isn't that right? Yes. But also for business wise, because if you start up a business and your returns every year is less than 15%, are you making a profit? Yes. 
No. Not really. At all. Same with your investment. If you if you invest in something and your returns are less than 50%, are you making a profit? So this sort of gives you a benchmark. Sorry. It's just a benchmark for you to say, okay, let me something to target. But again, when I say benchmark, everything is you have to put it in, in relation to where you're coming from. Are you all following me? Yes. Because for instance now, let me just give you a scenario. If you only have your cash under your mattress and you're earning nothing on it, then if you take your cash from your mattress to a savings account and you're getting 3%, it's better, isn't that right? Yeah. It's better than being under your mattress. Mm -hmm. If you take your cash from <coughs> the savings account and you buy treasury bills or bonds with it and you get, you know, 13 to 15 percent, but we're going to talk about that after lunch. It's still better than three percent. So it all depends on where you're coming from. So don't don't worry about you know all that. But yeah, just the aim is just always try and do better than what you currently have. Okay. Bigger question is if you. Although, if I go to the bigger question, I always tell people that you, at this point you only have two options. Yeah. So now that you know about consumer price index, by the way, it's not really that cost it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. okay. So don't blame me for this. This is, <laughs> this is just reality. But you've got two options. Now that you understand consumer price index, you now know where the reality of life you live in. I always say you have two options. Option number one, nothing. exactly. Do absolutely nothing, nothing about it. You say, okay, I don't want to do anything. I'm not going to take any risk. I'm not going to try anything. But at least you know where you're heading. Where are you heading? Minus. Poverty. Poverty. <laughs> are you going to retire? Are you going to retire wealthy if you do nothing about this? No. You're going to retire in poverty. But like I always say, at least you retire in poverty with knowledge that you are going to retire in poverty. So when you get to retirement and you're broke, you won't say you're surprised. You say, I, I knew, I knew I was going to be broke. You walked your way to the broke. Yes. And number two, obviously, is to do something about it. Obviously, something is better than nothing. Because I always say, if you do nothing, your, your poverty is guaranteed. So what are you going to do? Because something good. Yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's why you're here. That's why you're here. And like I said, we're not going to talk about cocaine and all that. It's going to be something good. <laughs> okay, so that's very important. And again, we now know we're going to do something about it, and we know what benchmark we're targeting. Okay? So, this is the time we break for five minutes.